Hi, this is David Papkin from TSI Consulting Services. Welcome back to Upgrading Your Skills to Server 2016. In this video demo, it's implementing AD Federated Services. So the first thing we're going to do is install and configure AD Federated Services. And then afterwards, I'm going to configure an internal application for AD Federated Services. So I'm going to go into DNS and in Server Manager. Notice in 2016, just the look and feel of it, a little bit different, very similar to 2012, just maybe some of the icons, et cetera, on this so far. I'm going to expand Forward Lookup Zone, click a datum, and then I'm going to say New Host or AAA, and I'm going to call this one ADFS. Give it an IP, add host, great, was added, done. The next thing I'm going to do is install ADFS. Add role of feature. Next, role based. Now I'm going to be installing on this one right here. I'm going to actually be on this, is I'm going to install it on London Server 2. I'm going to add another one on this one right here. So on London Server 2 is the one I'm going to add on this one right here. So I'm going to add federated services on this right here. Next. And then I'm going to do is in this, install. All done. Next thing I'm going to do is configure ADFS. On the notifications right here. I need to configure the federated services. Now I'm going to do is this. I'm going to create the first one in a farm. Right here. Okay, now on this one, I'm going to use this account for the current user. On the SSL cert, of course, I have to have one already. ADF is set. Good. And the display name on this one right here is going to be ADM Corporation. I'm going to create a managed service account. Account name ADFS. I'm going to create this one using the Windows internal database. Review options. It's going to go next. Great. And I'm going to click on configure. The next step, I'm going to verify AD functionality. I'm going to sign in as Beth. Then I'm going to try to do is with IE. So under all apps i.e. Windows Accessories Internet Explorer Then I'm going to press enter 
So as you can see, this file loaded. So therefore, Federated Services is working. So I've installed and configured Federated Services and verified it's functioning because I viewed the Federation metadata.xml file contents. The next thing I'm going to do is configure an internal application for ADFS. I'll configure claims providers. So on server 2, ADFS management. And I'm going to go in the claim provider trust. And I'm going to do is here, I'm going to edit claim rules. Now, of course, I could do it here and right click it and do edit claim rules or gotten it there also. And I'm going to add a rule. Now I want to do is send LDAP attributes as claims. And next. I'm going to give it a name. And on the attribute store, I'm going to pick AD here. I'm mapping the one there. Now on this one right here. Email addresses here. I'm going to pick email address. For the user principal name, I'm going to pick UPN. And the display name, I'm going to pick name over here. And I'm going to click on that. Okay, great. And finish. And say okay. And the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to configure the application to trust incoming claims. Now, please note that I have switched to look server one. Because I installed on server 2, I would installed the ADFS on this. And this one right here, I'm going to go to the Windows Identity Foundation Federation Utility. And on the location box. Now this is the path to the sample location that will trust the incoming claims from the Federation server. And this one right here. Next, I'm going to use an, an existing STS. So this is the metadata document location. Just to let you know, I want you to see what it was. I've pasted it in there already. Next, now I'm going to disable certificate chain validation. No encryption. Now, these are the claims that are going to be offered by the Federation server right here. Now, these are the changes that will be made to the sample application by the Federation Utility Wizard. So this is the application information. This is the security token service selection. These are the claims requested by the application. And this is the output. Then finish. And all goes well. And say OK. Fantastic. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to configure a relying party trust for the claims aware application. So I'm going to Relying Party Trust. 
I'm going to do is on here, I'm going to add Relying Party Trust. I'm going to start. I'm going to import data about the relying one on a local network. Next, now the display name on this one, a datum, test app. I'm going to do is in this permit everyone, then next. Okay, on this one, specify the monitoring service relying their federation metadata URL. Great. And I'm going to close it. Okay, great. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is here. I'm going to configure claim rules for the relying party trust. I'll take a look right here. I'm going to click on edit claims issuance policy in right here. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add a rule, pass through or filtering. And next. So I've typed past the Windows account name here, and from the drop-down box here, I pick Windows account name, which was a little bit far down here, and I got it. Windows account name. Finish. Then I'm going to do is I'm going to add another rule. Select pass to a filter. Next. And this one I'm going to put pass to email address. So I called it pass to email address and I'm going to look for email address right there. Good. Finish. Add another rule. Now I call this one pass to UPN. Put UPN there. Finish. Let me add another rule. Call this one pass through name. Going to select name. Finish. Then OK. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to test access to the claims of our application. Now I'm going to do is I'm not using Edge. I haven't tested this with Edge to see if this will actually work or not. So I put this in here and it says attempting. So I'm going to type in a datum. Beth. Come over. Uh, 
Okay, now notice the claim information on here, date and Beth. So it worked. Now we don't want to have to do is type in authentication information when you open the browser. So I want to configure IE to pass the local credential information in. On the start menu. We go to Internet Options. Okay, so Internet Options, Security tab. I'm going to local intra, local intranet sites, advanced. I'm going to add this website to the zone. And I'm going to add adfs.adatum.com at close. Okay. Now, of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up IE. So this time after I put it in, it didn't ask me, didn't ask me for anything. It just did as it just showed me all about the information. That'll conclude this demo for implementing ADFS. This is David Papkin, and thank you for watching.